Greetings, true believers. Marvel has always been and always will be a reflection of the world right outside our window. That world may change and evolve, but the one thing that will never change is the way we tell our stories of heroism. Those stories have room for everyone, regardless of their race, gender, religion, or color of their skin. The only things we don't have room for are hatred, intolerance, and bigotry. That man next to you, he's your brother. That woman over there, she's your sister. And that kid walking by, hey, who knows? He may have the proportionate strength of a spider. We're all part of one big family, the human family, and we all come together in the body of Marvel. And you, you're part of that family. You're part of the Marvel universe that moves ever upward and onward to greater glory. Nuff said. Face front, true believers. It's Scott from Admiralty Entertainment, and today we're looking at the Marvel Legends Stan Lee from Hasbro. Stan Lee Martin Lieber was born in 1922 and made his debut as a writer for Timely Comics with a prose story in Captain America Comics No. 4, published in 1941 under the pseudonym of Stan Lee, a name he adopted so that no one would link him to that work when he eventually wrote his great American novel. Stan served in the same division of the US Army as Frank Capra, Charles Adams, and Dr. Seuss during World War II, all the while still writing comics, but it wouldn't be until late 1961 that he would really make his mark on the world when he teamed with the already legendary illustrator and co-creator of Captain America, Jacob Kurtzberg, aka Jack King Kirby, to create the Fantastic Four and usher in the Marvel Age of Comics, with an onslaught of wildly successful characters co-created by Lee, proving that he was indeed worthy of his self-anointed title of The Man. Uh. Stan had always been not just a writer, but also a hype man for Marvel in general. So it wasn't a surprise when he would introduce the Marvel Action Hour, Hi, true believers. provide a voice for a character in an animated series, Hold it, son. Wouldn't you rather have an exciting action figure? Or appear as a playable character in a Marvel video game. But even non-hardcore comic nerds began to notice Stan's cameos in Marvel films as those motion pictures became increasingly popular. To the point that nowadays, even people who have never picked up a comic book in their lives would point out Stan Lee popping up. Wow, nice suit! Zip it, Stan Lee! His cameos had become so iconic by the time of his death in late 2018 that the entire Marvel Studios logo would be comprised of his appearances as a tribute when Captain Marvel released in February 2019. Of course, this isn't the first time Stan has been reproduced in plastic form, even within the Marvel Legends line itself, as seen in the form of a 2007 San Diego Comic-Con Spider-Stan figure that we've looked at previously. Though never formally announced, leaked pictures showed this Stan Lee being a builder figure split between two MCU-based sets in 2018. A Black Panther-themed two-pack of Everett Ross and Killmonger would have received his legs, and an Infinity War-based two-pack of the Falcon and Winter Soldier would have received the legless rest of him in a slightly unequal and potentially grisly division of parts. But while the two packs did come about, the stand pieces were conspicuously absent. Fans feared that MCU Stan would end up as one of those extremely cool but never produced toys, leaving a mustachioed hole in our MCU collections forever. But thankfully, the solo release was finally announced at New York Comic Con in October 2019, set for release in 2020. Stan's packaging is taken from the 2019 Marvel 80 Years line, just without that specific logo and a Marvel brand and nameplate instead of the individual character logo for the solo releases. The standard big clear window to view the figures and accessories is emblazoned with Stan's signature on it. Both sides of the box have Stan's catchphrase Excelsior, along with his signature again, while the back of the box has a blurb telling you that this figure is inspired by Stanley's cameo as a skeptical chess player in Marvel's The Avengers, the movie poster for that film, and a product shot of the figure approximating that scene. Superheroes in New York. 
Among the company logos underneath the legalese, you'll find POW Entertainment, whose logo incorporates Stan's signature, so you've technically got Stan signatures all around the box, leaving only the top and bottom as Stan signature less. The inner tray has a generic but not unattractive red with white burst pattern on it. Out of the box we get the Stan figure and two accessories. The less notable of these is the folded chessboard that he plays on, unfolded, during his cameo in Avengers. It's a nicely moulded piece, but it's lacking in some key paint detail. The hinges are nicely done, but the squares on the board are left entirely unpainted, and given that this version of the board doesn't unfold, we've basically got a lump of vaguely brown plastic that's not much use. Except possibly as an impromptu shield stand. Speaking of which, the flashier pack-in is Captain America's shield with Stan's signature emblazoned across it. While Cap isn't a character Stan created, it's both a nice nod to Stan's first published comic work, and is realistically the only accessory that could fit that signature on it and still be big enough to see it clearly. The shield was originally produced for the Marvel Studios' first 10 years Captain America and Crossbone set, and is a nicely sculpted piece, though there is an unsightly divot visible on the backside. There's plenty of detail in both the straps and the face of the shield, while the metallic paint colours, as usual, look great. Hasbro has some experience at making MCU cap shields by this stage. Stan's signature is painted in black with a white border on the front of the shield, and its orientation matches the straps on the back being horizontal, with the large loop above the smaller, meaning that the signature is only the right way up when the shield is on Stan with his arm straight down at his side. Any other pose leaves the signature askew. It's a cute accessory and nice enough, but ultimately it's not an integral part of the figure, and probably won't have as much use outside of acting as a de facto nameplate. As with most Marvel Legends, there's a decent amount of sensible parts reusage here. Most of the figure comes from the Bruce Banner figure we got in the Avengers Age of Ultron Amazon set, with the addition of a new jacket and arms to match, plus of course the new head. It seems that Hasbro straight up used the unreleased Builder figure recipe in creating the stand, rather than taking advantage of at least parts of the improved Captain Marvel Nick Fury male suited body. So we get the pigeon toed, unsteady on his feet legs that this mold has been notorious for. It's a strike against function more than form, as the sculpt overall still looks more than adequate, with plenty of nice wrinkles and folds in the fabric, and details on the belt buckle and shoes. The body choice is perfectly acceptable, though the size of his frame and head sculpt make him much more a Marvel Action Hour stand than a Marvel Cinematic Universe stand. Well, the 60s were fun, but now I'm paying for it. But I'm happy with that as a compromise. The head of a man in his 90s would probably look more out of place on a regular suited body than that of a man in his 70s. The newly sculpted parts showcase some great subtle detail. Pockets, ribbing, and the jacket collar especially, all have some very nice work that tends to get a little easily lost without paint or a wash to pick out the details, but it's there if you look for it and adds some great texture. The head sculpt is excellent, with the expression chosen really capturing Stan's exuberance, with paint application bringing that to life being pretty flawless. The likeness is unmistakable and exceptionally well executed. His glasses aren't removable, but I don't count that as a negative here. Plus, they look amazing. The majority of the paintwork here clearly went into the head, as the rest of the figure is mostly just moulded in the appropriate colour, with only a few spots to provide details like buttons or belt buckles. Everything looks as it should, and isn't obviously missing any detail that clearly required painting. The jacket's zipper would have been nice, and pretty much the only thing that springs to mind is a possibility beyond an overall paint wash on the jacket to highlight some of those aforementioned sculpted details, but neither could be counted as a necessity. To paraphrase the man himself, with a reused body comes reused articulation, so there's no surprises here when it comes to posability. There's a ball joint head, which gives left and right rotation, as well as some decent waggle and a degree of both upward and downward looking motion that's significantly enhanced by the neck hinge, which allows for positions ranging from, gee, that sentinel is huge, to, look, I've got Ant-Man in the palm of my hand. We have rotation and extension of the shoulders, swivel at the bicep, double jointed elbows, swivel and hinge at the wrist, the hinge at the wrist is a little impaired on the left hand with my stand, the ribbing of the sleeve of the jacket impinges just a little, leaving it less easy to pose compared to the right hand, 
but it's still far from a mobile. There's an ab crunch, swivel at the waist, and ball jointed hips which are somewhat restricted in terms of movement as opposed to most Marvel Legends. While the leg can raise nearly straight in front, the lateral movement is less than you'd hope and there's basically no backwards motion due to the bot sculpt. It's not new or unexpected, but it may hinder some of Stan's parkour poses. Parkour? PARKOUR! It's parkour. There are still swivels at the top of the thighs, double jointed knees, and hinges at the ankles with rocker pivots for the shoes. I'd say this is plenty of articulation for how you'd realistically want to pose him, and he's still more than capable of getting into more sprightly positions. Scale-wise, this figure hits just a smidge above the standard 6-inch mark. Stan was 5 foot 11 in real life, so that's close enough in a 6-inch range. He works fine with comic-based Marvel Legends, though there's plenty of leeway when it comes to comic depictions of scale anyhow, and doesn't look out of place with other Hasbro 6-inch series. He's a tad too short to work with the DC Direct Arrowverse figures, but Mattel's movie-based DC figures are within the realm of viability. What does that mean? This should be impossible now. I don't care if it's a DC movie. I love cameos. As are DC Universe classics, or the comic-based Mattel Multiverse figures. If you want to pop him in with other universes, your individual mileage may vary, Cowabunga. but it's still going to be a lot of fun. I think I know that guy. Of course, he's most at home with MCU Marvel Legends in terms of both scale and design aesthetic. Comparing this figure with the previous Marvel Legends stand from San Diego Comic Con 2007, there's clearly been a progression in action figure technology over the intervening 13 years, but I think each still has its own charms. The older stand has probably a more accurate build for an MCU era stand, but they're both in believable scale with each other, though the soft goods on Comic Con stand do make him look a little out of place next to his modern counterpart and frankly, most of the rest of the Marvel Legends line. Standor, the Stanley-inspired Masters of the Universe Classics figure, naturally towers over these two Marvel Legends versions, but that's to be expected and adds some nice height differentiation to your interdimensional Super Society of Stans displays. Excelsior! 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 Excelsior. This figure also has some use beyond just embodying the generalissimo of the Merry Marvel Marching Society himself, given that he provides a pretty good base for a civilian figure, or out of costume looks for a superhero. The most obvious option for the latter is Captain America, as the look of Stan's costume is similar in overall style to what Cap wears on the helicarrier in Avengers, and the power and glory endgame head is a pretty good match in terms of skin tone. Unfortunately, the neck ball on Stan is too big for a simple head swap here, so you'll have to either enlarge the hole inside Steve's head, or stick some putty in there to keep it in place. But still, even just precariously perched, it looks pretty good, and puts you that much closer to being able to assemble a full, off-duty Avengers roster. Cap. Mr. Stark. Hey, Tony. Oh! <laughs> I always wear this. This is one of my favourites. Stan's body does work with at least some comic-based heads, the figure seems to be the basis of the Spider-Man retro series Peter Parker, and I had reasonable success with some unmasked heads at hand, though the effectiveness of the results do vary. Overall, Stan looks great with MCU figures, and in my opinion, every Marvel movie figure shelf should have a Stan on it somewhere. While the price point is a little higher than it really should have been, and it would have been nice to include a few more accessories to commemorate some of his more prominent creations rather than the underwhelming chessboard, the execution of the figure itself is pretty spot on, and is a welcome addition to the MCU ranks. That doesn't mean that this figure completely supplants the 2007 SDCC version though. That release will become my 616 comic first stand, as I think the photoreal face of this release looks a little odd next to comic based figures. But that said, this stand is far more readily available, and if you're happy with it, there's nothing to stop you putting him wherever you want to display him. How do I get myself in these crazy situations? Stanley wasn't solely responsible for the Marvel Universe, but his creativity, hustle, and enthusiasm certainly earned him his long-running role as the face of Marvel. 
His co-creations stand as titans of modern fiction, making him worthy of inclusion in the same breath as Walt Disney and George Lucas as one of the key mythmakers of the 20th century, and I really think Stan would be excited about joining the collections of so many fans around the world. The same way he was excited about pretty much everything, but that was the heartfelt joy of Stan, and I think this figure is a wonderful tribute to him. Now this is some old school villainy. So, those are our thoughts. What are yours? We're out of here for now, but be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on Admiralty Entertainment. Enough said. <laughs> when do I say a girl for you? <laughs>